Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move the motion that pursuant to standing order number 37, the Senate do adjourn to discuss a definite mat matter of national importance, namely the drought uh, situation in the country. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, the Asal counties are faced with uh, devastating drought situation. Uh, that situation has affected uh, almost all the counties except three or in, the, in the 23 Asal counties. 11 out of these Asal counties are in alarm, a stage or phase of drought, and uh, the remaining nine are in alert stage of uh, drought. Mr. Speaker, sir, having been a governor for the last 10 years, uh, I would like to state that our county governments are ill-resourced uh, and uh, ill-prepared to deal with catastrophes of uh, such magnitude as the devastating drought situation in the country right now. Mr. Speaker, sir, drought is a recurring phenomenon globally, and it is hidden global crisis that is worse than pandemic such as COVID-19 and other pandemics that has happened. And unfortunately, uh, this crisis has not been mainstreamed or considered for the magnitude of devastation that it is causing across the globe. Mr. Speaker, sir, countries uh, far much developed uh, than our country, Kenya, have reported, countries in China have reported dams and rivers whose you know, bottom has never been seen because of the water content in those rivers having dried up. Just most recently, it has been reported, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, that the streams feeding most dams and lakes, like Lake Naivasha has dried, and the lakes are uh, losing 0 0.5 meters of water literally every week. This, the extensive direct and indirect impact of drought has never been properly you, you know, quantified by our country. The situation in Kenya's arid and semi-arid lands, which make up 89% of the land mass of this country and houses 38% of the population of uh, Kenya. These regions also house 90% of uh, the you know, wildlife that is bringing in about 12% of, uh, contributing 12% to our GDP. The Asal counties also host 70% of the livestock uh, wealth of this country. And as such is estimated that over 70 billion worth of uh, livestock wealth. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Asals have been hit the hardest uh, with the former president announcing or declaring drought a national disaster uh, in September of 2021. Uh, before that declaration, the counties in the Asals have been dealing with drought because for, uh, on average about four successive rainy seasons have failed in the Asals. And while maybe the counties that are not Asals may not feel the immediate impact, but what is happening right now can very easily make it its way to other regions if not capped. Well, However, in the last few years, and the last 10 years to be precise, that period have reduced to two to three years. And where we stand right now, the Asal counties, most of them have had, out of 12 successive rainy seasons, we've had uh, less than adequate or suppressed rains in the Asals. The situation has been uh, made worse by the locust invasion that just took place, which has severely impacted. For the COVID, you know, the capacity of the, of this as a 
as if that was not enough. Give, give uh, Senator Rupa the mic, kind of. Your mic is going off. Ah, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, as I say, his, while the Asals have historically been suffering periodic drought, but over the last, uh, uh, the, the droughts of between 1969 uh, to almost uh, 2020 has been averaging, uh, you know, between five to 10 years. But over the last uh, 10 years, the situation has changed. And now every two to three years, we are suffering uh, this uh, drought situation. This situation, as if it was not enough, Mr. Speaker, sir, the recent uh, locust invasion has affected over one million hectares of uh, land pasture within the country. And that has exaggerated the situation and really gravely interfered with the coping capacity of counties to be able to deal with drought as it was. And as if that was not enough over the last three years, the COVID pandemic has made it worse. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, I, I stand here today. Our government, led by President uh, William Ruto, has announced some intervention for these counties. Uh, and that discussion is ongoing uh, uh, as it is some little intervention has already gone. But what I would like to request and emphasize is scientific determination using the UN indicators of food ration per person to be able to determine the level inter of intervention required. More than half the livestock in the assets have gone. That means more than uh, uh, the, 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 the pastoralist communities will not be able to cope even after, if we receive rain because their mainstay or the dependency in terms of livelihood has been pastoralism. Mr. Speaker, sir, the situation in Mandera County where I represent uh, is not any better. Over 400,000 households are in dire need of, uh, uh, you know, nutrition and food support. An estimated 200,000 is experiencing severe food insecurity while around 100,000 are likely to suffer from acute malnutrition by the end of 2022. The affected households lack basic necessities as their support has been wiped out in terms of livestock numbers. Therefore, I urge the government to immediately carry out coordinated, multi-sectoral, timely, humanitarian assistance uh, to contain the, uh, uh, by way of accelerated food security for purpose of intervention in order to save lives. The inter uh, and number two, I also request operationalization of national uh, drought dis emergency fund. I also want to request implementation of blanket intervention where uh, uh, the situation can be tamed. Mr. Speaker, sir, as I conclude, and with only two last points, previously, before we were declared a middle-income country, what was happening is non-state actors were coming in to help county governments to cope. But after we've been declared middle-income country, the non-state actors can only intervene after declaration of drought as uh, a national emergency. And I would like to request our president, who I believe is extremely compassionate, to declare drought a national emergency as urgently as possible so that we can synergize our efforts okay. between Senator the national Lopa, government, county you. governments, and non-state actors. Thank you very much, Mr. Who Speaker. Is, uh, who I, is Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move the motion and request Senator Enoch Wambua to second. Thank you.
Uh, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to a second the motion by my brother, Senator Ali Roba, on this road issue, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate the Senator for Mandela uh, for thinking and effecting his thoughts in seeking the adjournment of the House to debate this matter, which is a matter of national importance. As speaker, one of the things that, as a Senate, irrespective of where we belong, must apply our minds on, is a question of every now and then, certain parts of the country will have to deal with a drought situation and attendant famine. The speaker, our forefathers used to sit back and wait for the rains to fall. And they plant. And if the rains don't fall, then they starve and walk very long distances in search of food to feed their families from areas which would experience better rains. In this day and age, Mr. Speaker, it's actually a shame that many generations down the line, we are still sitting back, waiting for the rains to come. If they don't come, then some people starve. We declare drought a national disaster, and we go out there to beg. I am happy to note, Mr. Speaker, that the mover of this motion, Senator Ali Roba, has been a governor, and that agriculture in the books is meant to be a fully devolved function, and that county governments are expected again in the books to ensure that agriculture succeeds and by extension, our people are fed. But Mr. Speaker, what has happened, and this is the sorry state, what has happened, Mr. Speaker, is that very few county governments, I don't know how many, have taken the designation of agriculture as a devout function as seriously as they should. And I'll give an example of my own county, which is an, in an arid or semi-arid land. A study was done by the Southeastern Kenya University on how the county government could collaborate with non-state actors. The speaker, I, I will beg to be added like three, four minutes. This is no, important. Uh, just kind of second the motion. Yes. Uh, because of time and this motion has a lot of interest and we have now 40 minutes left. Actually, that's five. Okay, the speaker is second. Have you? Yep. Ah. But you could have created your statement, but